Now that the dust has settled a bit, I'm finally going to be talking about the new guns in depth, starting with the coil gun. But before we get into the nitty gritty here, I have to cover a couple of things quickly. Since I'll be talking about damage, I'm going to be using the damage numbers mod, which is very useful for knowing just how much damage you're doing at any given time. But you'll notice that the numbers that show up when shooting things in this mod don't line up with the numbers given on the weapon stat screen and in many community resources. The reason this happens is that creatures get damage resistance based on hazard level, which for large creatures increases further based on the number of players in the game. The actual HP numbers of enemies never change, so while people will say grunts have 108 HP on hazard 4 and 5, a grunt really always has 90 max HP. It just takes less damage on higher hazard levels, so it's as if it has 108. This means that while an M1K shot that pierces armor has 55 direct damage, it actually only does 45.83 damage on a body shot to a grunt. And that's what we see with this mod. So you might be wondering, why do players in the wiki do this translation where we change enemy base HP into effective HP instead of changing weapon damage into effective weapon damage, which is what is actually happening in-game. The answer is, it's just less work. Imagine you and your three friends are using different guns and want to know how many shots it will take to kill a grunt. It's faster and easier to just multiply the grunt's HP by the hazard scaling rather than divide all four weapons' damage values. And that just becomes more and more of a factor the more different builds you consider shooting weak points versus shooting armor, and so on. All of this is just to say that the damage numbers I will mention will all be a bit higher than the numbers popping up when shooting enemies in-game. And that's just because raw damage is not the same as damage after enemy resistances. Also, the damage numbers mod doesn't display excess damage, so if you pop a grunt in the head for 264 raw damage with weak point M1K, it will still show just 90 damage, since that's all the, the grunt had to lose. Back to the coil gun itself. Right off the bat, here's some stats. Shots do 130 damage, 170 with the damage mod. It's hit scan and penetrates through walls, although it penetrates less through harder surfaces. Also, it innately penetrates through any number of bugs, and ignores their armor completely. Unlike most things that ignore armor, it's able to do extra damage on weak points alongside noted bug obliterator breach cutter. But unlike breach cutter, it gets bonus damage against frozen targets. Bear in mind that the weak point needs to be the first thing the shot hits. It can't hit a bug's weak point from behind, just like blow through rounds. Besides doing direct damage, the shot leaves behind a damaging trail in a radius surrounding its path. The base trail has a 0.2 to 0.25 second tick rate, and ticks for 2.5 fire damage. That's 11.11 .11 damage per second on average. The electric trail mod adds a separate 0.25 second tick rate that does 3 electric damage per tick. That's a consistent 12 damage per second. Both combined will do 26.11 DPS on average. The trail lasts 5 seconds at base, 6 with ultramagnetic coils. Taking into account that all damage over time effects will immediately tick once when an enemy starts being affected by them, if an enemy stays in it the whole time that the trail is around, it will do a bare minimum of 50 damage. With the electric trail, it will do a bare minimum of 110 damage. That's if you have bad luck with the tick rate. Usually it'll be at least a little higher than that. The electric trail also slows by 80%, like other electric effects in this game. If it's not clear, this mod is really good. Overcharger adds up to plus 48 flat damage at max overcharge, taking 96 frames of overcharging to reach that point. It's tricky to actually get that max bonus though, the window between reaching plus 48 and the gun overheating is pretty small, but it does let you get more damage without consuming any more ammo. 
Controlled magnetic flow lets you fire at a partial charge. The gun has four levels of charge, with level four being fully charged. And when shot, the damage and ammo consumption both scale proportionally. 25% damage and 10 ammo, 50% damage and 20 ammo, 75% damage, 30 ammo, or the normal 100% damage and 40 ammo. However, the trails that are spawned do not scale downwards in any way, so you can not only kill weaker bugs more efficiently and quickly, but you can also put out the crowd control effect of electric trails for less cost. The overclock triple tech chambers allows you to fire two extra shots after the first in a small window. The two extra shots scale down to 50% of the damage of the first, functioning like half-charged shots. And they interact with both overcharger and control magnetic flow. In other words, they get half of whatever your overcharger bonus was, and with controlled magnetic flow, you can fire a one-charge shot for 25% damage and 10 ammo cost, followed by two 12.5% damage and 5 ammo cost shots. Again, all of the trails spawned by these shots do not scale at all. They're just as strong as they normally would be, even though you're consuming a lot less ammo and taking less time. Here's a few breakpoints you might want to keep in mind. At base damage, which I do recommend because of the amount of ammo the tier 1 ammo mod gives you, grunts can be killed with either a 1 charge weak point shot or a 2 charge body shot, followed by the trail damage over time. However, without electric trail, they'll need to stay in the trail basically the whole duration, which isn't very practical. Slashers will require a 3 charge shot to kill with the electric trail. If you take damage or hit their head, you can do a 2 charge. Web spitters die to a 2 charge shot directly, or to a 1 charge shot and a bit of trail damage. Acid spitters die almost immediately to a full charge. and still pretty quickly to a 3-charge and the trail. Mactera spawn die instantly to a 3-charge shot, and pretty quickly to a 2-charge. Try draws can only be one shot if you have Overcharger, or the tier 1 damage mod, but they only just barely survive a full-charge weak point shot normally, and die to the trail soon afterwards. Those stats in a vacuum don't tell us the whole story, however. This is a bit of a weird hybrid weapon. It's very accurate and does a lot of damage in one shot, which might give the impression that it's a single target damage weapon. But although you can snipe distant enemies with this, due to the long charge and reload time, it can't keep up sustained single target DPS beyond that initial shot. On the other hand, it has innate enemy penetration and leaves behind a lightly damaging field, which can be changed into an electric one for more crowd control. But it's not exactly a swarm clearing powerhouse either, with the narrow line of fire that is again limited by the reload and charge time. There is an overclock for each of those things, mole and hellfire for single target and swarm clear respectively. But with those accepted, you might be asking, what is it for? The answer is a little complicated, and involves the way we tend to use and classify weapons. Deep Rock players normally tend to push weapons towards the extremes. High single target damage, like Lead Storm Minigun, Lead Spray BRT, or big swarm clearing AoE, like Nero Toxin Payload or Magic Bullets Bulldog. Pairing a weapon that does one of these things with a weapon that does the other is simple and effective. But since this weapon normally is sort of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, pairing it with a primary that is built for one of those extremes tends to feel kind of lacking. Instead, I think this gun, again excluding Mole and Hellfire, feels by far the best when paired with a primary that is also sort of a jack-of-all-trades. 
By that I mean a primary that is at least passably good at both single target damage and swarm clearing. A Goldilocks gun, if you get what I mean. Good examples of this include Burning Hell Minigun, which has a strong close range AoE effect while also doing good sustained single target damage because it's still a minigun. Auto Cannon with Big Bertha, which boosts direct damage a lot, but still keeps the normal effectiveness of Auto Cannon splash damage. And a whole lot of Hurricane builds, really, but here's one I happen to like. Paired with these sorts of primaries, Coil Gun ends up in a sort of supportive role for its main gun. You can use it as a pocket debuff machine, pulling it out to quickly electrify oncoming groups of enemies. This softens them up and the slow makes them more bunched up and easier to kite and easier to clear out with your primary's AoE. But at the same time, it does still retain the ability to one-shot a tri-draw or take a nice chunk off something like a menace or warp at long range and through walls sometimes. I find this especially good with Big Bertha. The electric slows are a good way to stretch the autocannon's AoE that much further, and having that crowd control with some long-range sniping both together in the same weapon is a nice complement to Big Bertha autocannon. The overclock I would recommend the most for this sort of play, that isn't too far from what the base gun does, is triple tech chambers with a setup like this. Ultra magnetic coils is easier to use than triple tech chambers and is also useful for this sort of supportive playstyle, but isn't quite as rewarding as triple tech. Since it allows you to fire three times in a row, with decreased cost for the latter two shots. You can put down up to three electric trails and cover a whole lot of space in a slow effect very quickly and at little cost. Frequently, I'm putting down two trails in a V shape like that. Shot on the sides of an oncoming group, this can greatly slow the movement of the bugs. Also, check this out. Burning Hell is definitely also in contention for best partner for this gun, though. Being able to stun and slow large numbers of enemies really lets you play a lot more aggressively with the Burning Hell fire radius. Also, and I cannot emphasize this enough, use Born Ready with this gun. The reload time sucks, and the mod that improves it is competing with very significant mods. In the case of this kind of build, controlled magnetic flow. You can also use triple tech for burst damage. With the damage mod and overcharger, you can potentially do 218 damage on the first shot, followed by 109 on the two shots afterwards. Obviously, potentially a lot more on weak point hits. However, this makes it a lot less ammo efficient, and if you really want to repeatedly shoot big bug weak points with your secondary, you should probably use six shooter or a BRT build. Backfeeding module is, in my opinion, not really worth the damage decrease, and re-atomizer is a bad gimmick. Although it does let you give a random hostile bug Steve's damage resistance. You shouldn't do that, but you can. But now for those two overclocks that do actually lean hard into single target damage and swarm clearing. Mole and Hellfire, respectively. The way Mole functions is strange. Every surface it penetrates adds a flat 150 damage onto the shot. It doesn't matter how deep the surface is, just how many surfaces it goes through. Each one will add more damage. So if it goes through a wall like this, it just gets 150 damage. 
but if you put more holes in the wall, like this, now it will exit and re-enter the surface multiple times, getting more damage each time it does. The most practical way to get big damage is to do this. One, get a friendly engineer to make a platform stack. Two, shoot through it repeatedly with controlled magnetic flow from above to turn it into Swiss cheese. Three, do huge damage to bugs from behind this wall at long range and while ignoring all kinds of armor. If you want to extend this further, you can just repeat this platform stack more times, and then shoot through multiple stacks at once for even bigger damage. This is probably only worth doing on elimination missions. Lastly, we've got Hellfire. If you don't give a shit about any of the complicated or tricky to pull off stuff mentioned so far, this is your overclock. It dramatically improves the size of your damage trail and also makes it way more powerful when inflicting heat. Hellfire has its own 0.15 to 0.2 tick rate that inflicts 12 heat per tick. Also, it counts as an environmental heat source at intensity 1. That's kind of its whole own complicated thing to explain, but the long story short is this prevents enemies from cooling, and at intensity 1 also makes them gain another 2 heat per second. So, on average, the Hellfire Trail inflicts slightly over 70 heat per second to anything in the trail. This lights normal enemies on fire pretty quickly, especially with heat spreading. Once they're on fire, they're taking another 15 damage per second for a total of 26.11 DPS on average, and that 15 per second from the fire remains at least for a while once they leave the trail. A well-placed trot from this can wipe out a huge number of bugs, and so, this one falls pretty comfortably into the great crowd clearing role. It's also realistically the best overclock this gun has for general use. It should be mentioned that the Hellfire effect only works with full charge, so controlled magnetic flow isn't good here. You probably just want the reload time mod instead. 